Hi everyone and welcome to Sparkles Fish, the channel where we prove that crafting is messy by making a mess. And guess what? We're gonna get messy today. Um, so one of the things I wanted to challenge myself to do was to use up every bit of the paper pumpkin kit. And in it comes the tissue paper and I thought to myself, what could I do with it? Well, I know you can take dye out of tissue paper and make some interesting patterns on paper, so I thought I'd play with that. I did one earlier and I just used the tissue paper and I don't know how well it's going to show my camera. It came out a little light. It's still drying, so it could still darken up, but it's definitely, you know, lighter side. But then again, the tissue paper is lighter. So I want to try something else to see what would happen. So... For this technique, I need some thick paper, and I'm just using my standard white cardstock. If I had watercolor paper, that would be even better, because it could handle the amount of water that I'm going to put on it better than this. But I don't, so, uh, you know, make use and make do. Um, and then I wanted to see if I could get some of the ink itself to actually bleed in with the blue of the... Um, thing but do not overpower it so i think what i'm going to do is take the stamp spot and just kind of make some light marks here and there add a little bit of the color not too much there i think that'll be good now for this technique and i was pressing real light there so i don't want to get a lot of ink there uh, if you have a spritz bottle, you would use a spritz bottle. I don't, so I will be making use of my hands. And I'm just going to get the paper nice and wet. And even wet at that. So just spread all of this water out. Right on the paper, let it soak in for a minute or two. And then I'm going to take, at first, this one with the ink. Cut that right in, and oh, look at that ink bleed. And then just a couple light dribbles where it needs it, just off my fingerprints. Then we'll take this next piece, pop that one down on, crump up another one a little to give it some texture, add that one in, and we're going to soak it. Now, I will leave this with the ink on it to soak probably the better part of this evening. Uh, I really want to see the colors move. I will just kind of tuck things around here so we don't end up with massive white spots. You know, I don't want to waste the dye on my cutting board here. Well, crafting board. It's been retired from the kitchen. That doesn't mean it's not useful. We'll get rid of a lot around here. So I'm just gonna, I'm gonna tuck that in. Take a nice little play here. Give it a nice little dab. Use this maybe. Just to kind of tap that down. Make sure there's good contact with the paper. Okay, so I'm going to leave that for the better part of the evening. And realistically, it's going to be at least tomorrow before the paper's dry. So we'll see where we get here with this. See what kind of shapes and splatter we get out of all this motion. Now, I do wish those shapes were a little less square, but I think it's spreading quite a bit, too. It's kind of where I really want to just kind of work the ink around. Might just use a little bit. You know? Let it work out a little. Have the water a little heavier in some places. Like right there. So that the ink flows a little further. Just play with it, judge it a little. So right now things are really wet and that's okay. Um, like I said, we're gonna 
let this dry. This one here I made earlier and it does seem to be drying nice and flat. So I'm not too worried about the paper. As it handles the water, it may start to curl, but even if it does, I'll cut it up into pieces. I just wanted to see what kind of color I could pull out and what kind of paper I could make with this. So, that's where we are so far. I will be back with you once this dries. Okay, so you remember that paper that I dyed with the tissue paper and the ink? Well, it's dry now. Um, so what I did is I cut it down to a bunch of pieces that were a half an inch smaller than a card face. So this is one example of what I have. So I'm going to work with this. This one had the blue and the, um, the ink on it as well. And so I was able to get a total of six card fronts. So I'll move the card out of the way for now and I'll show you what I'm doing. We are working with the... Just a Note of Hope stamp, which is one of the few we haven't used. Uh, the only one left to use now is the flower, and I do have plans for that one. So I'm just inking up my stamp. And then I have here, this is about a 2-inch circle, and this is about a 1.75. Uh, to be fair, it's the top and bottom of a shot glass that I traced. And give it a nice stamp, toss that ball to the side, close up my ink because I'm starting to run low, grab my wet glue, and we will go ahead and glue this piece together. So I'm just gluing this in the center of the black just to give it a nice rim. And then I'm going to take up my last dimensional and to be fair I've actually done some other cards I saved the last good dimensional for the video and I'm going to put this about in the middle so I'm thinking right there so you can see I've really kind of used up the dimensionals I'm doing some damage now I did get six cards out of this um and I am using the ribbon so I cut the ribbon just you know a little bit longer than the card front and what I'm doing is I'm tying it very gently into an overhand knot. And I'm trying hard to make sure that there's no twists or anything because I do want there to kind of be a nice side to this. And so I'm just going to fuss with it a little until I get what I like. Tighten that a little. See how the other side is turning out? Yeah, I like the other side better, so I'm going to fuss and just with this. And just kind of play with it until you get the shape that you like. And I like a little bit of a curve to mine. Then with a pair of scissors, I'm just going to come in and trim the ends gently, because this dies furry. Just into a little sh a little ribbon shape there. So again, gently. Okay. This is what I'm down to in glue dots. So I'm going to use up some of those. I'm actually using three glue dots just kind of centered here beneath the note of hope because I really want this ribbon to stick well. So one, two, and I don't have my pick out today, but I really should have grabbed it. Three, this is much easier with a pick than it is with your hands. Now, I will say that once I was done cutting the ribbon for the six cards, I am virtually out of ribbon. I am completely out of tissue paper. I used all the tissue paper in dyeing the paper. So I'm just gonna make sure that that gets nice and stuck down there. So in case you were wondering, that is all I have left of ribbon to work with from that whole giant roll. 
So I'm pretty good about feeling pretty good about how quick I'm using things up. I do want to make sure that I use up every bit of this. I've still got six envelopes and a couple of assorted little pieces to use up. And with the six, I will be up to 24 cards, I want to say. I believe. Yeah, it should be 24. So two dice and we're getting there in a really good time. So, and then I'm just going to add in a couple of little sparkles randomly wherever I feel like them. So you can see, and it just makes a nice kind of broken watercolor marble effect on the back of the paper. It's light, but it just kind of brings out the tones. And it's nice that I was able to make some more background paper. Because that was one of the things that this didn't have a lot of. It's a lot of embellishments. But it didn't have a ton of background. So throw that onto a black card. And these cards will be lined with uh, printer paper on the inside. So that they have a useful space for writing. So I just thought I'd show you. There's one. Two. Three. This one is again on the purple paper. Four, five, and six. So that is how I used up the majority of the um, the ribbon and the tissue paper. Now, that doesn't mean we're done. There are still more cards to be made, but I'm kind of loving that. Thank you and have a good night.